and those who know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, O Lord, hast not forsaken those who seek thee. <coughs> and that says it all right there. If you, if you do everything you do with God in your heart, then God is going to guide you. Amen. God's going to convict you. His Spirit's going to come inside of you. He's uh -huh. going to tell you if something's right. He's going to tell you if something's wrong. Uh -huh. Now, i got something here I want to read to you. It's, it's not mine, but it's something I want to share. It's just food for thought. Amen. The topic of it is, is God good? Oh, yes. Awesome. Is God good? If he is, then why is there suffering and evil? Let's assume for a moment that God is all-powerful. That means God can do anything that is logically possible. So he can create galaxies, subatomic particles, and you and I. Mm -hmm. But God cannot do what is logically impossible. He cannot make a four-sided circle or a stick that has only one end. So can God make a rock so big that he can't lift it? No, anything God that creates, he can lift. Mm -hmm. What if when God created human beings, us, he wanted us to be free? Freedom is a good thing. But if humans are free, they cannot be forced to obey God. Because freedom without choice is like a square circle. Okay. It's a logical contradiction. No choice, no freedom. God didn't want robots. He wanted real people like us. The, few, the first humans that were endowed with the awesome power of free choice abused their freedom. Mm -hmm. The tragic consequences of their bad choice... And our bad choices as a whole ripple across the world. God is responsible for the fact of freedom. But we humans are responsible for our acts of freedom. But let's remember, we do not suffer alone. God will put an end to suffering and evil. And God became a man to suffer with us. God is good and he wants real people like you to know him. But the free choice is and always will be Ours. Now, I researched many names for God. Uh -huh. You guys probably know more about him than I do. <laughs> Tell us about I'm still learning. Elohim. Uh -huh. Elohim, the creator, was used 2,500 times in the Hebrew Bible. Uh -huh. El Elyon, uh -huh. the God Most High. Uh -huh. This title stresses God's strength, sovereignty, and supremacy. El Roi, the God who sees. Oh this was God. Hagar's name for God when he saw her affliction. Oh my God. Adonai, the master. This occurs 300 times in the Tanakh, first used in Genesis 15 2, where Abram addresses God as Adonai Yahweh, the tetragram, or the tetragrammaton. tetragrammaton. Yahweh Lord, once written and never spoken. Mm. Yahweh was a word that wasn't allowed to be spoken in olden times. It was only allowed to be written. Mm. There are people who say that its actual pronunciation was lost through time. Jehovah Jireh. Amen. That's one that when pastor says it just sends ripples through my soul. I love yes. that name. Yes. The Lord, our provider. Genesis 22 and 14. Also the name Abraham gave to the place where the uh -huh. Lord provided a sacrifice oh, instead of yes. Isaac. That was one of Isaiah's favorite scriptures. He would really like that. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. From Exodus 15, 26. This name was one God prophetically spoke about himself. It was not one that someone gave to him. Jehovah Nisi, that's another one. When the pastor says it, it just sends ripples right through my spirit. The Lord, my banner. Also the name Moses gave to the altar he built after defeating the Amalekites. In Exodus 17, and 15. Jesus, Jesus. Jehovah Mekadishim, yes. the Lord who sanctifies you. First mm. used in Exodus 31 oh, and 13. God. Jehovah Shalom, mm. the Lord is peace. Also, the name Gideon gave to the altar he built in Ophrah in Judges 6 and 24. Mm. Jehovah Sabo, the Lord of hosts. Charles Spurgeon said, The Lord rules the angels, the stars, the elements, and all the hosts of heaven, and the heaven of heavens is under his sway. The Lord is on our side, our august ally. Woe unto those who fight against him, for they shall flee like smoke before the wind when he gives the word to scatter them. 
God bless his name. Mm. Jehovah Raoul, mm. the Lord my shepherd. Oh, yes. As in Psalm, 20, Psalm, Psalm 23. Shepherd appears around 80 times in scripture and implies a relationship with his sheep. Mm. I can remember the, the words, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Said it to him three times feed, feed. to imply, feed, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed. Jehovah Sidenku. Mm. Uh, Sid Kenu. Mm -hmm. The Lord, our righteousness. This name is applied to a future Davidic king who would lead his people to do what is right and thus bring peace to the restored city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Shamra, the Lord is there. Mm -hmm. The Jerusalem of Ezekiel's vision was known by this name. Mm -hmm. And El Olam, the everlasting God, mm -hmm. is used in Genesis 21 and 33. Now Proverbs 3 and 6. In all ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And you know, I gotta testify about that because since God started calling me, and since God started pulling me into his will, first I resisted a little bit. Once I realized that once you give yourself to the Lord and let him direct you, let him take you over and guide you. Just the peace alone that you get. Man. Just the peace. When I tell anyone yes, about God, yes, I tell them the struggle that you're going through right now, uh -huh. the war that's in your head. My God. The, it's like Lord. it's like being drawn and quartered. You've got a horseman with a rope tied to each of your limbs, mm -hmm. and they're all going in separate directions. Mm -hmm. And it ought not be. Mm -hmm. If you give yourself to the Lord, you know that the Lord is doing the guiding. If you know that yes. what you're doing is for the Lord, that is what's going to bring you the true peace, the fruit of the Spirit, just as promised. You can stand on God's Word. God does not lie. Mm -hmm. Does not lie. The peace that you get is worth more than anything. Anything. Amen. Just that simple peace. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that there was a time in my life when I didn't have much peace. Mm -hmm. My mind was always wondering, going this way, that way. Once Jesus started coming into my life, I started to get that peace a little bit at first and a little more. Amen. And it just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And I can't stress enough how thankful I am to the Lord. Amen. He graced a wretch like me to allow me to have some of his peace. Thank you, Jesus. John 4 and 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I agree with that. Because I worship him in spirit every day, more so each consecutive day than the day before. Mm. I find myself thanking mm -hmm. him in all things, praising him in all things. Mm -hmm. I do what Elder told me. I had I had somebody cut me off today on this on the same road. <laughs> Little bitty sports car, everybody's doing 20 because you know it's it's school time and 20 mile an hour zone there. And this guy in this little sports car, he revs up his engine, flies around me and one other person, and then cuts back in and starts going 20 again. And I put my hands up the window, you know, do a little bit, show how proud I was. Well, I thought of what Elder said. When you do something like that, be like King David and immediately say, God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. I should pray for that person. It was funny because God showed me as soon as we got up towards the stoplight by HEB, that he's staying in that left lane, and here I go, right by him. Because I'm, I'm going up to H-E-B, and he's making a left onto the highway. So I just go right by him. He rolls his window up as I go by. You don't want to hear me, you know, laugh at him or whatever, I guess. But I just thought it was kind of funny. You know, here I was mocking this man when I should have been praying for him. Mm -hmm. So what God means to me, God is everything. I owe God everything. Without God, I wouldn't be here. And there are some out there who are lost, who feel that, the only reason they're here is because they're a fish, monkey, protozoa. That's oh that's God. the extent of their life. When they die, they become worm food. And I can understand, I can understand why they want to think that way. Because if you believe that there's an all-powerful God that is perfectly good and perfectly just, and you have to answer to him for the evils that you commit during your life, that's not a very nice place to be. If you know that you have to answer to God. So a lot of people, they would rather think that they came out of the ground and when they die that they're just worm food. And You know, I understand. I understand that men love darkness. But it's our job to let them know 
But as pastor says, it ought not be. Mm -hmm. It ought not be. You know, God is perfect oh, and yes. just. Mm -hmm. And he will judge us if we do not have the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus was put up on that cross, he took the punishment for our sins. And if you trust in him, give your life to him, and allow him to take over your life, God will forgive you. And Jesus will come into your heart, and he will give you new values. He will give you new desires. He will give you everything that you've been searching for. Mm -hmm. You have to put him on, though. You have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You can't just say it. It can't just be lip service. It can't be, oh, well, 20 years ago I said this, that, and the other thing, but I have no problem you know, going around and doing evil. You know that the Lord is in your heart when anything that you do, you are immediately convicted. And you know that it's wrong. And I'll listen to your conscience. So the Lord's put on me lately that... When it is my time, when he tells me to go out into the world, that there are people out there who are lost. And all through the Bible, he compels us to go out and reach them. And I love the pastor brought me into the concept of the fivefold ministry. Because that is, it's God's word. It's what he's telling us to do. And I'm thankful to God that he provided us with a pastor who can see that, who can see the fivefold ministry for what it is. Yeah. so that he can discern who belongs in what position. And I admonish everyone here, when he comes to you and, and he says he feels that this is your position, take heed to his word, because he's not going to say anything that the Father's not putting in his heart. If he tells you that you should be a teacher or you should be a minister or you should just study to show thyself approved. Follow, follow your shepherd. Because he's not going to lead us wrong. He's going to help to equip us to fulfill the great commission. In closing, I'd just like to say that the question was, what does God mean to me? He means everything. Without him, I wouldn't be here. And without him, without the Lord, I don't know. I, I don't even I don't even know what to say. There is no without the Lord. Amen. There is only with the Lord. Amen. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Yeah. As for me in my house, I will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.